Hello, welcome and thank you for watching. Dr. Sahal Farzam, Dr. of TCM, founder of Needle Pro Australia and business consultant at One Dream Global. I want to thank you for all the support you've given me and my organization at Needle Pro Australia. And in return, I want to extend my gratitude for you in the form of giving you as much value as I can to help move your business forward. I'm going to be doing a lot of these videos this year and it's going to be based on a lot of personal development tips and strategies, a lot of business tools, business marketing, business advertising, and really anything else I can to help you move your business forward and become a leader in your industry. I want to start today by talking about goals because I think it's a really good time at the start of the year. Most people have a lot of resolutions, New Year's resolutions. In fact, most of them actually fail. But I want to tell you a little bit about goals and how to actually get started and have your year and your business and personal life make it a big year and make it count. So let's get started and let's talk about goals and I want to actually cover more of the science behind setting goals and what it takes to actually achieve goals and move your business and your life forward based on some strategic goal setting. Alright, the first question I have for you is do you actually have any goals? Now the problem is most of the time people don't set goals because of two really uh, major reasons. The first one is in fact the fear of failure. So most people don't actually attempt to even strategize and actually create goals because they're actually already afraid and anticipate failing in case they actually do set goals. That's the primary reason. The second reason is actually because most people don't actually know what they want. Most people are actually just drifting away in life and just hoping for the best. Now, I'm not sure about you, but that's not really how I want to live my life. And the best way to overcome that is to actually make strategic goals based on what you want and what you want to achieve. One of the other reasons actually is also because most of the time people have no goals because they're too busy subordinating their beliefs and their thoughts based on the people around them who actually control and dominate their thoughts. So the first thing you need to do even to begin to actually implement goals is to sit down, have a few moments to yourself and really become more authentic in your heart and really delve into yourself and your psychology deeply and really understand what it is that you personally want not what someone else is trying to project onto you thinking this is what you should get and what you should do. So that's the first thing. The first thing is people are actually afraid to fail and they actually start to create goals based on other people's thoughts. Now, the other thing is if you do have goals, most of the time people don't actually have them written down. You see, the thing is when you write your goals down, you actually already start to inflict so much energy and movement in your physiology that it actually increases your chances of achieving your goals by tenfold. I'll say that again, when you write your goals down, you actually increase your chances of achieving that ten times. Now apart from just actually increasing your chances, one of the reasons why you should write your goals down is because the moment you start to write, you subconsciously command your brain to start working for you. You see, if your goals aren't written down, at the same time of thinking about your goals, your brain is thinking about a thousand other things it needs to actually put into place for you. So it doesn't actually know where to start and it doesn't know how to prioritize what's really important for you. So make sure you write your goals down and when you do, you have to be very specific with them. For example, a common one is weight loss. When people say my new resolution and my goal is to lose a certain amount of weight this year. It's just not good enough. It's not specific. You have to be really specific based on a specific time frame. And you have to be specific on what it is exactly that you want. For example, how much weight are you willing to lose? How much weight do you want to lose? And by what time? What frame? You've got to give the month and the day and the date. And you have to make it so specific because then your brain can actually prioritize it for you and say, you know what, this is important because you've commanded me subconsciously I'm going to go to work and start to do everything I can to attract opportunities for you to actually achieve those goals. So the first few things is to make sure you be authentic with your goals and the second one is to write them down be specific with the time frame. Now I want to tell you a little bit about the science behind goal setting and why some people actually fear making goals and also actually fail. There's actually a, a big neuroscience strategy behind this and I want to really make it clear because if you understand the mechanics of how your brain works with you, you might be in a better position to actually start to create goals and achieve them a little bit better. The first one is actually called the M drive. You see, the thing is when you start to imagine and visualize about your goals, 
when you're writing them down, you start to create a little bit of motion and activity in your visual cortex, which is the part behind your head, the posterior part of your brain. When you start to get really into your goals and you start to imagine and visualize your goals, you start to create motion in your visual cortex and that starts to release some activity to the center of your brain which is in a place called the nucleus accumbens and that actually involves, is involved with releasing dopamine into the prefrontal cortex of your brain in order for you to become consciously turned on and be awakened to the goal in hand. So the more you start to imagine and visualize your goals you start to create the activity for your brain needed in order for you to enhance your performance in going ahead, attracting opportunities to achieve your goals. That's called the M drive or the motivational drive. What it's trying to say is your brain is now motivated and actually on your side to go and get the goal in hand. The best thing about the brain is it actually does not distinguish between what's real and what's not. So what's imagined and what's not. The best thing about that is you should be in a position to imagine and visualize your goals. The reason why is because you should actually create an almost fantasy about what you want. You see, one of the other reasons why people fail is because the goals are actually too small. When your goals are too small, your brain will simply not invest enough human power to go and get it. Why? There's two primary reasons behind the brain's function and mechanics and one of them is to actually reserve as much power as it can. Your brain is actually a shy organ and it needs to protect you, it becomes protective of you. So the moment you start to do something beyond the norm, beyond your comfort zone, your brain sort of gets too uh, protective and says, no, we need to recline your back to get to your comfort because this is the best place to be. But the more you imagine and visualize and make a goal based on a certain fantasy, the more your brain will start to change its chemistry and actually help you to go towards that goal. See, there's three levels between, um, well, there's three levels by actually goal setting. Let me just cover these up quickly. The first one is, in fact, when people make goals based on what they know they will achieve. The reason why people do that is because they don't want to fail. So they actually create goals with a high probability of achieving them. Again, the problem with that is your brain will simply not invest enough human power and potential for you to go and get it. It's just not significant enough. So your goals have to be significant and they have to be big. The second category is when people actually create goals based on what they think they will achieve. That's closely linked to the first one. And the problem with the second one is there's actually no motivation or inspiration behind your brain if it sort of knows you're going to get it anyway. The third category is where the, the minority of people fall into. And these are the people that start to create goals based on fantasies. They start to create goals based on what actually makes them nervous, excited, but also emotional. You see, I know that sounds strange, but the thing is, because your brain can't distinguish between what's real and what's not, the more you imagine an almost fantasy in the goal, the more your brain starts to change its chemistry. I'm going to tell you exactly how this happens. You see, when you start to fantasize, you start to ask yourself subconsciously, this is what I truly want. The reason why most people are afraid to actually get and ask for what they truly want is that because they've been told no so many times in their life. In fact, on average, it's, there was some research done that up until the age of 18, you've been told no 180,000 times. So most people's beliefs start to change and their behaviors are dictated based on the subordination of the people around them along their upbringing. So when they're child to teenage and so on. So the more you fantasize about a big goal based on a big vision, the more you start to change that uh, chemistry in the brain. And what happens is it starts to create some theories for you. Your brain starts to get ideas in the form of a theory. So the fantasy starts to take some theory and uh, shape into theory. The theory starts to get you to attract ideas that is directly proportionate to the goal in hand. And once you start to see some mind, um, really small results every now and then, your brain starts to get a little bit more activity and then you start to become a little bit more emotional behind your goal because that emotion actually starts to create motion. It starts to get you to move 
closer and closer daily towards your goals. The best thing is at this time, two things happen. The first one is you start to question yourself. Because most people don't actually see themselves capable of achieving anything more than the standard of life that they're currently living at. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you do appreciate, acknowledge and understand that you actually are capable, you start to create more motion and the motion starts to take some form in the form of setting out a certain project, uh, vibration into the universe. You see, one, what happens is, when your goals start to take some shape and the theory starts to attract ideas into your life, you start to get more emotional and it starts to create more motion for you to keep moving forward and not reclining backwards. You start to actually project a certain vibration into the universe and the universe starts to conspire with you and starts to project back certain vibrations that is directly relevant to the goal that you want. It in fact actually starts to give you strategies and you start to see opportunities that are going to be directly aligned to what you want out of your goal. Once this happens, the energy is so strong and powerful, the theory starts to become a fact. Modern day founder William James, a modern day psychology founder William James actually stated, believe and the belief will create the fact. So it starts off with a fantasy. And the fantasy has to be authentic in your heart, what it is you truly want. Ask for it. Don't be afraid. You start to step up. You start to create a theory and start to get ideas. The theory and the ideas start to create some motion. You start to become more emotional about your goal. You actually start to become more nervous. See, if you're not nervous about setting your goals, it's probably because they're too small. So you've got to get nervous. Allow yourself to be nervous. That nervous energy starts to create some motion and momentum and then you start to project the vibrations into the universe and the universe will allow you to start attracting opportunities that is directly relevant to you going ahead achieving your goals. So think big, visualize, imagine and ultimately have a vision behind your goals. You see having a big vision will start to override certain fears. That leads me to tell you about the next step of the brain and how it works about retreating people from achieving their goals. So the first one was the M drive, the motivation drive that actually helps you move ahead getting your goals. The second one is actually called the F factor or the F factor. And what happens here is if your goals are not genuine and authentic and they're too small and not realistic and not powerful, I said make a fantasy, but they have to be big enough, but also realistic. So if they're not realistic, if they're too small and they're too abstract, they're not really clear enough, what happens is your brain starts to inject from its memory bank, memory bank, it starts to inject certain memories of your past that is directly relevant to low self-esteem, uh, low confidence, uh, guilt, shame, these kind of emotions, these negative emotions, then your brain starts to inject them into your, into your body and physiology. And the reason it does that is because it actually starts to create fear and allows you to recline because you decline your conscious state. So the fear starts to decline your conscious state so that you can actually become comfortable again. Remember I said your brain likes to protect you. If you don't have a big vision behind your goals, your brain actually thinks you're going to fail anyway because it brings up memories of your past when you failed and it actually starts to make you retreat back to your comfort zone. But you see, comfort is the enemy of success. It cannot get you anywhere. You can't be comfortable in if you want to be big, if you want to attract new opportunities in your life. So don't be afraid because fear is ultimately there to refine your technique and the best thing to handle fear is for you to embrace it and become curious with it. Become curious and know what it's trying to tell you. The best way that I personally found to overcome fear is to increase your vision. You see, the moment you become more uh, personal about your vision and the moment you actually start to really deep, uh, dig deep into your visions, you start to override the fear because for you, the vision, the vision that you have actually starts to awaken you. So when you're more aligned and awakened to your vision, nothing will stop you. And your brain is 100% on your side in order to help you get what you want. As long as you're being genuine, authentic, and don't be afraid.
The last thing I want to cover about goals, which is an important topic, is about habits. You see, most of the time, people don't realize that it takes a certain time for you to create new habits. The reason why most of the time people actually fail in their New Year's resolution really quickly, normally within a week or two, is because they don't understand the meaning about the resolution. See, the resolution means to resolve. To resolve existing habits so that you can create new opportunities to get new results. So if you're not happy with your current results, well, you need to create new habits. Because your current habits are actually dictating your current behaviors and your current behaviors are projecting and producing your current results. So the best thing to do is to first become aware. There's a lot of good research being done in, uh, in an organization in America called Praxis Institute. And what they're finding is the moment you start to become aware of the certain triggers that actually allow you to give up really early, you start to actually recognize those patterns. And at that time, you start to inject new habits. Once you do this, your brain starts to actually value the new habits and slowly it starts to dissipate with the old habits to make way for the new habits to set in. Once you reframe that, or once your brain reframes that, it then actually starts to implement new strategies for you to release the old habits and then your brain naturally retrains your physiology so that you can implement the new habits because there's no more room for the old habits. So your brain starts to recognize, reframe, release the old habits and ultimately retrains your physiology based on the set of new habits. But you have to be open to know that you've got to be more disciplined to create new habits that's going to get you new results. I know there's a lot of information on goal setting that I've just covered for you. Please take time to really understand. These are all based on a lot of research that I've done. A lot of leaders talk and, and, and really project their ideas onto this. It's not really rocket science. It just means you have to believe. Like I said before, believe and the belief will create the fact. But you have to get started somewhere and be persistent. You see, most of the time we project our values onto others and say, well, it really only happens to lucky people or those with a lot of luck. But if you understood what luck actually means, you would actually probably think different about luck. You see, luck is simply defined as persistence. So when you, when you persist, you start to attract opportunities and it is because you become more lucky once you are more persistent. So luck is really based on persistence that will create and drive opportunities in your way. I hope the video has been helpful. If you actually think that the video might help your family and friends, please share it and get them to watch it. If you have any questions at all, you are welcome to email me at info at needlepro.com.au and I'm going to be doing a lot more of these videos. I hope it's been helpful and I will look forward to seeing you next time on upcoming videos. Thank you for your time.